Hello, my audiobook story time stars. How are you all today? I hope you are all well and happy. Today, I have a special story for you, and it's called The Golden Goose. Doesn't that sound exciting? If you want to know what happens in this story, sit still, listen carefully. The story is coming up after this. There once was a man who had three sons, the youngest of whom was called the simpleton. That's not very nice, is it? He was laughed at and despised and neglected on all occasions. Now, it happened one day that the eldest son wanted to go into the forest to chop wood and his mother gave him a beautiful cake and a bottle of water to take with him so that he might not suffer from hunger or thirst. When he came to the wood, he met a little old grey man, who, bidding him good day, said, Give me a small piece of the cake in your wallet, and let me drink a mouthful of your water. I'm so hungry and thirsty. But the clever son answered, If I were to give you my cake and water, I should have none for myself, so be off with you. And he left the little man standing there and walked away. Hardly had he began to chop down a tree when his axe slipped and cut his arm so that he had to go home at once and have the wound bound up. This actually was the work of the little grey man. Then the second son went into the wood and the mother gave him, as she had given to the eldest son, a sweet cake and a bottle of water. The old man met him also and begged for a small slice of cake and a drink of water, but the second son spoke out quite plainly. What? I give to you? Then I lose myself. Be off with you! And he left the little man standing there and walked on. Punishment was not long in coming to him for he had chopped at the tree two times when he cut his leg so badly that he had to be carried home. Then said the simpleton, Father, let me go into the forest and chop wood. But his father said, Your brothers have done themselves much harm, so as you understand nothing about chopping wood, you had better not try. But the simpleton begged for so long that at last the father said, Well, go if you like. Experience will make you wiser. To him, the mother gave a cake, but it was a very plain cake and had been baked in the ashes. And with it, she gave him some horribly warm water. And when he came to the wood, the little grey man met him also and greeted him and said, Give me a slice of your cake and a drink from your water. I'm so hungry and thirsty. The simpleton said, I have only a cake that has been baked in the ashes and some very warm water. But if that will help you and make you satisfied, let's sit down and eat together. So they sat themselves down and as the simpleton held out his food, it actually became a rich cake and the warm water became good creamy milk. So they ate and drank together, and when the meal was finished, the little man said, As you have a good heart, and you want to give so willingly a share of what you have, I will grant you good luck. There stands an old tree, chop it down, and in its roots you will find something. Saying this, the old man left, and off went the simpleton to cut down that tree. When it fell, 
There, among its roots, sat a goose, with feathers of pure gold. He lifted her out and carried her with him to the inn where he intended to stay the night. Now the innkeeper had three daughters, who, on seeing the goose, were curious to know what wonderful kind of a bird it could be. And longed to have one of its golden feathers. The eldest daughter thought to herself, "Surely a chance will come for me to pull one of those feathers." And so, when the simpleton had gone out, she caught the goose by the wing. But there, her hand stuck fast. Shortly afterwards, the second daughter came, as she too was longing for a golden feather. She had hardly touched her sister, however, when she also was stuck fast. And lastly came the third daughter with the same object in mind. At this, the others cried, "Keep off, for goodness' sake, keep off!" But she, not understanding why they told her to keep away, thought to herself, "If they go to the goose, why shouldn't I?" She sprang forward. But as she touched her sister, she too stuck fast, and pull as she might, she could not get away. And thus, they all had to pass the night beside the goose. The next morning, the simpleton took the goose under his arm and went on his way without troubling himself at all about the three girls who were hanging on to the bird. There they went, always running behind him, now to the right. Now to the left, whichever way he chose to go. In the middle of the fields, they met the priest, and when he saw the procession, he called out, "Shame on you, you naughty girls! Why do you run after a young fellow in this way? Come, leave him be, leave go!" With this, he caught the youngest girl by the hand and tried to pull her back away from the boy, but when he touched her, he found he could not get away. And now he too must run behind everybody. Then the sexton came along and saw the priest following on the heels of the three girls. This astonished him that he called out, "Hi, priest! Why are you going away so fast? Did you forget that today we have a christening?" And he ran after him and caught him by the coat. But now he too was stuck fast behind everybody else. As they ran on. One behind the other, two workers who were returning from the field with their tools came along. The priest called out to them and begged that they would set him and the sexton free. No sooner had they touched the sexton than they too had to hang on, for they too were stuck. And now there were seven people stuck and running after the simpleton and the goose. In this way, they came to a city where the king reigned, who had an only daughter, who was so serious that no one could make her laugh. Therefore, he had announced that whoever would make her laugh should have her for his wife. He went with his goose and his train of people stuck to him before the princess, and when she saw the seven people all running behind each other, stuck to the boy and the goose, she began to laugh. And she laughed and she laughed till it seemed as though she could never stop. A little later, the simpleton demanded her for his wife, but the king was not pleased at the thought of such a son-in-law, and he made all kinds of objections. He told the simpleton that he must first bring him a man that could drink off a whole pool of water. At once, the simpleton thought of the little grey man who was sure to help him. So off he went into the wood, and in the place where he had cut down the tree, he saw a man sitting who looked most miserable. The simpleton asked him what was the cause of his trouble. "Oh, I'm so thirsty," said the man, "and I cannot quench it. I cannot bear cold water. I indeed have emptied a whole tap of water, but what is a drop like that to a thirsty man? In that case, I can help you," said the simpleton. Just come with me, and you shall be satisfied.
He led him to the king's cellar, and there at once the man sat down in front of the big cask of water, and drank and drank, till before a day was over he had drunk the whole cellar full of water. Then the simpleton demanded his bride again. But the king was angry that a mean fellow everyone called a simpleton should win his daughter, and he made a new condition. Before giving him his daughter to wife, he said that the simpleton must find a man who would eat a whole mountain of bread. The simpleton did not stop long enough to consider, but went straight back to the wood. There, in the same place as before, sat another man who was buckling a strap tightly around him and looking very depressed. He said, I've eaten a whole oven full of loaves. But what help is that when a man is as hungry as I am? I feel quite empty, and I must strap myself together if I am going to die of hunger. The simpleton was delighted on hearing this and said, Get up at once and come with me. I'll give you enough to satisfy your hunger. He led him to the king, who meanwhile had ordered all the meal in the kingdom to be brought together and an immense mountain of bread baked from it. The man from the wood set to work on it, and in one day the whole mountain of bread had been eaten. For the third time the simpleton demanded his bride, but yet again the king tried to put him off and said that he must bring him a ship that would go both on land and on water. If you are really able to sail such a ship, said he, you shall at once have my daughter for your wife. The simpleton went back into the wood, and there sat the grey little man to whom he had given his cake. I have drunk for you, and I have eaten for you, said the little man, and I will also give you the ship. All this I do for you, because you were so kind to me, and shared your cake and water with me. Then he gave the simpleton a ship that went both on land and water, and when the king saw it, he knew he could no longer keep back his daughter. The wedding was celebrated, and after the king's death, the simpleton inherited the kingdom and lived very happily ever after with his wife as the king of the land. It does pay to be kind and share, doesn't it, boys and girls? I hope you do. The End